Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday. We're getting ready to talk about Yay. some Linux and open source bits that are being, you know, going on in the world. It's the middle of the week. Might as well. Oh, no, we're going on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Got some things for you this afternoon, this evening, wherever you may be. Of course, we're going to be talking about GNOME. Everyone's super excited because they're going to start messing around with window management. And uh, <laughs> Waterfox Browser is back from its uh, mm. corporate overlord. Which yeah. is uh, interesting news to say the least. And Ubuntu has done something with Intel. It just says Ubuntu for Intel. We don't yeah. know. It's a mystery. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about audio plugins on Linux. If you're paying attention, that guide went out just a little earlier today, somewhere around 11 o'clock. And we're going to wrap things up with a big honking chonky pie. Oh, then we had a new patron yesterday. Um, is he or she? We need patron yesterday. In in our uh, our voice chat. Oh no, that's Ian. Ian from like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. I thought so. The name looked familiar, so I wasn't sure. Ian is a new executive producer. Yeah, it's okay. We mentioned him a few weeks ago then. All right, there we go. Now I'm on the right thing. I'm getting everything lined up. I think I did the social medias, right? All that's going out. I really <laughs> need to log into my Facebook account on uh, my Facebook account, the Linux Gamecast, the, the Linux one place Gamecast. where we have a official Linux Gamecast anything, because like, I'm not creating a personal Facebook account. Um, I went ahead and put that up, uh, but I've never logged into it on this browser. That'd be an oh. interesting feature. That'd be an incredibly dangerous feature to have, though. I'd be like, just trust me on this one. Let me <laughs> let me get my login credentials from this other browser. Could you just numb that up for me real quick? Well, now you can, you know, Firefox will import the Google uh, passwords from the Chrome. Mm -hmm. This, in this case, it would be from Chrome to Chrome. Oh, okay. I'm going to sync them. Yeah. And it's different accounts too. I'm like, I try to keep those accounts separate because we all have different. Geez, how many Google accounts do you have? I Think know. about it. I know. I know. That I know the logins to. <laughs> one, one, two, three. I have four that I, off the top of my head, that I know about. Wait, yeah, four that I could still <laughs> log into. There's definitely more in the works, but I don't. Those are gone. Mm, those have been okay. lost. I have two, but I had more, and I got rid of the other ones. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry. There was a notification sent out, uh, I believe, at the end of last week. Might have been in the beginning of this week. Google sent out notifications. says, hey, if you don't use your Google account in the next two years, see ya. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. <laughs> Steve, I'm, I'm, we've been over this. T-shirts are not formal wear. I know you believe they are. I know you believe they are, and I, I, I'm just done arguing with you over it. So, Hi, Steve husband. I'm glad you were able to make it, despite your insane schedule at work right now. He's been doing like 70-hour weeks. <sighs> Having some fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Is that at zero, zero? That's at zero, zero. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a hello bird. <laughs> that, that bird looks like it shoved its head in like a thing of like ice cream or it's half lollipop. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, it does. Ultimately, Hi, the end result is absolutely horrifying, so I approve. Hi, Rohit. <laughs> Hi, Mir. We got some peeps. All right, um, we're gonna 
rock and roll today because oh, okay. I got a busy schedule. Oh, you got a week. busy schedule. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Pistachio and coffee ice cream bird? It's the idea of ice cream just... It's a little bit terrifying. We were talking a little bit in the pre-show. If you saw the uh, Valve store. The Valve merchandise store is gone. It had its last day. It's no more. Isn't that terrifying? <laughs> Isn't it sad? Let me tell you what's sad. I'll tell you what's really sad. That was like... Oh, right, I also had a merchandise store. Seems like I might have known that for a minute. But it is Legon. And there was a little bit of confusion on Mastodon. Uh, I think Civic hit me back and he was like, that's a fan merchandise store. And I'm like, you need to tell Valve that because that's the one they link to. It's like, this is our official store. Here's the link. One of the things I'm going to be talking about on Saturday for Linux Gamecast, uh, is when we're going to talk about Steam, is uh, I told you about it, I warned everybody about it about two weeks ago, if you were in the same beta, there was a switch to still use the old UI, because you know Steam's got the UI overhaul. Like Now in the official client, that's a real thing now, you can't use that switch anymore, so you're stuck with the new interface. Now, Steam has a fallback interface that you might not know about. You might not know about. I'll show you how to get that open. Because instead of having your Steam store and the browsers and all that, that's just a game list. It's like, it looks like your messenger, but it's just a list of your games, and you click on them and they launch. Some people might be interested in that. And... Ooh, I gotta make up my mind if I'm gonna buy this AJA Kona LHI. I just got three of them on new bar. I've been looking for an AJA card to do a video on. Because it requires some hoops to get them up and running in OBS. And I want to see what those hoops are. I want to do like an A-B comparison because you have like the, uh, what is it, the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, I have one of those, the 4K version, I have the regular version of one of those, and those are pretty basic, right, HDMI in, HDMI out, you got a breakout cable for, um, you know, like S-Video, RGB, and all the other fun stuff. The HAA Kona LHI is roughly the same thing. Um, HDMI in, HDMI out, but it's also got SDI in and out, and it's got the breakout cable. And it does AES instead of just spit of. We'll see how those balance out. I really want to see how much of a pain in the butt it is to get them. Because there was a big thing, I think we talked about it, might have been this year. I don't know if it was last year, like right at the end of last year when AJA did the big added support for their uh, Kona 4, Kona 5. Kona 1 question mark? Uh, but not the Kona 3 for some reason, because they're like, we're just pretending the Kona 3s don't, ex don't exist anymore. So getting that built into OBS, like, because you got to get the SDK, and it sounds like a good time. We'll see how that stacks up against Intensity Pro. I don't know if it'll be a fair fight, but... Oh, right. I need to fix it. There we go. Yeah. All right. An Amiga 1200. I don't know, man. Like, if you want to play with, like, vintage PCs, that's cool. Anybody gonna stop you? There's, uh, hundreds of YouTube channels dedicated people playing with old PCs, and that's cool. They're keeping them out of landfills, right? Because otherwise, they'd be e-waste. Let's 
I'm going to be building a vintage okay. computer. I'm going to be building a retro PC. Mm -hmm. Jill doesn't care about that. Jill doesn't like retro PCs. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love them. <laughs> Hello, Ralph. 9900. Yeah, I still don't know what, like, dark mode the Illuminati means. That's what I see on this end. Oh, yeah, the, the it's Twitch. It's like the little yeah. cute little guy with the uh, horns and, like, the uh, yeah. dollar bill symbol. Must be one of the well-known streamers. One of their uh, logos. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of the Twitch ones I don't know, because I don't watch those, you know, Twitch celebs. Everybody's got their emotes. I mean, we got our custom emotes. You think about like when our emotes show up in another chat, people are like, whoa. What's that? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Strider knows who like that Kappa. is. Oh, that's just a Kappa. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting to that age, man. Can't stay on top of it. I start watching like a perusing through our videos and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know, especially like live stream fails. I'm like, I don't know any of these people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> None of them. And you see, uh, especially on Twitch, because you go into the Twitch app, it'll be like, hey, this is what's hot right now. Like, I have no idea who any of this is. Like, all right. But I'm not at the point where I won't click on it. Be like, so what's going on, though? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know the names of a lot of them. And then when I went to TwitchCon, a lot of them were there. So I got to see their shows and that was fun. But I haven't really followed them since. <laughs> I try to keep my... Uh... <laughs> I don't follow a ton of people on Twitch. I probably follow I about... I know, I don't either. Mm... Got a handful. <laughs> I'm trying to think how wide that row is. If it's, let's say, maybe about 30. Maybe about yeah. 30 people. Why? Because I do like Twitch alerts, but I don't like 12 o'clock Twitch alerts because from like noon <laughs> until like 3, everybody decides to stream. Yeah. I know I could cut it off, Constant. but I want them. So I don't want like that. I followed way too many people on the um, Linux Gamecast, uh, the Twitch account that we're on right now. It just got unmanageable and I didn't... Um, feel like going back and like manually mm, unfollowing yeah. all the people. So what did I do? I just created my own account. That's <laughs> how you do it. That works. I have about 20 that I get notifications for. And the, a lot of the others I don't have notifications turn on. I just, if, they, if they're on and I'm interested, I will watch. Now, how many people do you follow on YouTube? <laughs> I've got over a thousand. No, no. Subscribers. Let's, let's, let's dial, how many of how many non Disney people do you follow on YouTube? <laughs> a lot, a lot. Most of them are Linux related. Uh, but me and Steve, uh, we share my account, so he's got. A so lot Steve's of got like three, four channels he follows. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's well. He's got quite a bit, quite a few NASA channels he follows, and then music channels, and then I have some music too. Um, and a few science ones myself. I but just took a look. Mostly it's Linux stuff. And then, of course, be besides the other half is uh, Disney content. <laughs> I thought I was following more people on... Uh, I'm following 267 people. Oh, okay. I thought it was more <laughs> than that. I thought it was like maybe yeah, like mine's three, a lot more. 400 people. <laughs> That's a lot on my uh, other YouTube account. The one that I made because I was like, I don't feel like unsubscribe to all these people. I'm oh, following. yeah. 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 I'm, I'm following like nine or ten people, which is sad because I need to add more people to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, like great. Steve's husband said we, we confuse their al algorithm because <laughs> when they <laughs> want to show, you know, want to show, oh, uh, 
this is good for you. It's sometimes strange stuff. <laughs> it is. Then you got to deal with the algorithm just trying to, um, man, I'm here's no joke on uh, my alt because I have like the uh, I have like this old ancient Google account from, you know, it's like probably coming up on almost 20 years old. Uh, and then I got like uh, the Vin, Vin account that I use for like Jackbox and stuff like, you know, it's my Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my more recent one. And somebody it showed me a video of like, oh, look, somebody's got a pet sloth. And I'm like, all right, what's pet sloth look like? And I hit that <laughs> out of curiosity. And it was one of those videos with like the happy music. And I was like, this is my pet sloth. We do cute pet. And I was like, ugh. All right, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was yeah. going to be somebody like, hey, look, I got a pet sloth. I've taught him to assassinate people or something interesting. But no. To this day, and this was like three or four weeks ago. I, the first three or four sections will have two or three of those like bouncy happy here's a mouse isn't it so cute look at it Ooh. Yeah. i'm like no i, I don't care Go so away. once you watched one then, right you know like like the the dodo account the dodo that shows the animals that have been rescued and whatnot mm -hmm. i i like like those i, I actually subscribe to that 100 percent. <laughs> go for it not what i'm looking for that algorithm was like, we got him. This is his thing. And I'm like, no. I, <laughs> I, I saw the video and I'm like, that is the opposite of whatever my thing is. That's not it. Yeah. That's like, Steve has been, you know, he, he follows astrophysicists and and cosmologists and whatnot. And then I, then Fresh Baked comes up, which is one of my Disney people. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> Rohit. I mean, feel free to like, let us know what it is so I don't have to like open a link. But it's not that exciting. It's a hot SDL3 alert. Ah, it's not that exciting. I don't know. It might be. It's a, uh, is a, uh, is that on Nicholas's Patreon? Oh, I'll yeah, get a yeah. Uh, that's on Ryan's. I'm, I'm, okay. If it's on Ryan's, I'll go check yeah. it out. Yeah, that's on Ryan's. I'm one of his patrons. And by check it out, I'll check my email notification. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, that's when I find out. <laughs> yeah, somebody threw the gauntlet down uh, with a uh, Aculus earlier this week. He had a little uh, thing. He's like, somebody sent me a thousand dollars. I'll do a thing. Mm. I just say a thousand dollars showed up, and it was fun watching him. Like, wait a minute, where'd this come from? What do you use for audio then if you don't want to use it? Well, if you're messing around with old stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else do I got? Open Alesoft. All right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the wrong thing to use, but it's better than, uh, just, just go straight to Ulsa, man. Come on. Come on. Get on, little man. Darn, I'm having a hard time staying awake today. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Big day yesterday. I worked a lot yesterday, and I even got around to ended my day with playing some Trackmania practice maps. <laughs> F mod is omnipresent, though. Well, it's been humid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's been hot in here. Crazy hot. Yeah. Today's, uh, well, it's going to rain all day tomorrow. Um, I don't know. What, what is the humidity? Is it below 80% maybe? Uh, oh, it is. It's only 50% humidity. That That's practically desert. Yeah. Here. Um, that's what it is here right now. But for us, that's like really high. <laughs> so <laughs> it's only in the 70s, but, the, you know, the low 20s. But the humidity is high for us. It's 10.30 late for you to eat dinner, Steve? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. He didn't get home till like 10. That's hard. I, I don't like it when, it when we have to eat so late. Are you guys normally in bed by like 9? <laughs> yeah, we like to... By, you know, I, we want to be in bed by 11 to midnight, so, because it takes, you know, an hour or two before you actually go to sleep. <laughs> but I I sometimes have to be, yeah, when I 
with work Sunday mornings and I have to get to bed earlier. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'm good. Let's go ahead and hop into this. Okay, then. Let me check that real quick. Um, where am I at on that? Uh, do I want to tighten that? 46. Oh, I need to look at a way to fix this. Let me remove that envelope. Envelope, mm -hmm. envelope, envelope. I don't know. People know what I'm saying. There we go. Now we're recording. Your envelope, your envelope works. Or you could say envelope <laughs> like I do. <laughs> it's, uh, you say tomato, I say tomato, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, episode, uh, 386. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of open source, Linux, anything else we find interesting, you know, we try to have fun and all that. So if you hate joy, just go ahead and go to, go to find somebody who's angry on YouTube. That's easy to do, isn't it, Joel? Yes, <laughs> it sure is. It doesn't take much work to find people like, oh, I'm so mad about the thing, and I'm like, man, just chill out. You know what? We're going to chill out at least one day a week, and that's what we do every Wednesday. I'm Vin. That was Joel. We got everybody watching us live over on Twitch. A lot to talk about this week. A lot to unpack. Uh, Jill, you have uh, added a new thing to your sticker collection. Yes, I have. Uh, I got my bossy die cut sticker LGC merch in the mail, the one that then made. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> it's adorable, isn't it? Yes, it Steve, sure no, is. No, next time Steve's giving you some <laughs> guff, just stick that on him and be like, Steve, <laughs> obey. But it, but it looks nice, Ben, and the lines on the obey turned out well. The only little thing, problem with this sticker, and it's no big deal because I just have to cut it off, but it came a little bit deformed. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing wrong with tell. that. You just got to cut it, but oh, it's so I, funny. <laughs> I believe it. That's a, uh... Actually, I will, in, in honor of... Uh, 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 this will be a collector's item because it's a mistake. <laughs> they miscut it. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> that was funny. Oh man, yeah, I finally got the uh, got it up on Frank. He's yeah, out, doing his it looks thing. good with the t-shirt. He's adorable. <laughs> oh, such a fussy, fussy skeleton. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm talking about you. So. <laughs> Aw, and Ven, I just realized that I'm not getting return video, <laughs> lower, lower thirds and such. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you look like it's a, uh, I'd have to restart the show or something. All I gotta do is click Aww, a button, Joe. It's not, just click a, I yeah. know, but I hate <laughs> having to interrupt you, <laughs> but it's part of the fun, no, I guess. too late. Show's <laughs> over. All the credits. Too late. No, mm -mm, we're done. <laughs> There's the credits. All right. So I got a bunch of things going on. Uh stacked up things i did the uh like beginning of the month ordering so we got the cheapest what i would call serviceable test test bench available on amazon nice 28 dollars, and you know nothing against like because you know they're the ones that jill knows about them we talked yeah. about them like the plexiglass ones that are like you know 12 15 bucks something like that yeah i still have one out over here <laughs> this is a metal one with a back plate you know something that you could you know build out into so I got that. That's coming. I got everything I need to get that stuck together. What else? Oh, right. So if you didn't watch uh, the game show we do, not really a game a show about gaming and uh, gaming mm -hmm. technology, I picked up the um, this guy. Yeah. So this is the Ooh Apple. The Apple TV. <laughs> yes, the Ooh. The Ooh <laughs> Apple. We bang suggested it on Saturday. <laughs> And uh, either that or if you turn it upside down, it's the prototype. In its <laughs> yeah, the M3. <laughs> that would confuse somebody. Uh, now, I got that for like five bucks. I'm like, you know what? Why did I get it? I don't know where mine is. 
I know it's here. It's one of those things. You got something in your house that you know, you know for a fact. It didn't go anywhere. It's in a box somewhere or in a drawer somewhere. And or it's so hard to get to that you just rebuy it because no, it's no, easier. No, 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 no. I'm too, I'm <laughs> too, I, there's an organization in my house. There's no, I can't get to anything. That's, that's okay. a, uh-uh. I have too many computers. <laughs> so everything. Can't find it. Sold this for five ninety nine. I said, hey, let's pick it up. We'll do a live stream. You know, this is all that came, came with the power cord, which is fine. Now, I haven't opened it up, haven't done anything, but I did uh, since Saturday, like, plug it in and stuck a cable mm. in the HDMI hole in the back, and it, it boots up. It's got a mechanical laptop hard drive in it. That's what's like, do I need? So we're going to upgrade this. We're, we're going to switch this out to an SSD. These things are primitive. This is like yeah, a one gigahertz sure. Intel CPU. I think mm-hmm. they got like 256, maybe 500 pill megs of RAM. And of course, we're going to put Linux on it. Now there's the regular Linux that you can pop on. You can get a thumb drive and like, boop, mm-hmm. put it up. Yeah. Something else that I couldn't find was my remote because I swore I knew where the remote was for oh, this thing. Oh, yeah. So this didn't have a remote with it. And I'm like, I got a remote. I got a remote. I've seen that remote. Couldn't find the remote. No. Got a remote on eBay. <laughs> Poor Ben. <laughs> These remote and, you know, like the uh, aluminum, like nice ones that they came with. Those things are like 40 bucks now. I'm like, oh, I know. Are, are you I guys know. like crazy? Yeah. I'm not spending 40 bucks on an Apple remote. Then I look for the compatible ones on uh, Amazon for like 10, 15 bucks. And everyone's like, nope, doesn't work. Or why do you need the remote? Because you got to do a little sequence to get it to boot Linux. Got one Absolutely. on eBay for 99 cents. <laughs> I, I just put a bid. I was like, I'll give you a buck for that. And the bid was ending in like an hour. And I'm like, well, somebody, nope. So I'm getting the remote. <laughs> we got that. We're going to upgrade it to an SSD. We're going to need some adapters for that. All that's been ordered. And we'll do the traditional Linux on it. But what we might do, because it's a little more challenging and you can get a lot more usability out of this if you just have one laying around, is we're just going to put some regular Linux on it. We're going to put Debian on it. And then yeah, that, Debian. That's what I put on my Apple It's TV. a very <laughs> involved process because is. <laughs> there's a regular setup you know like i said there's a nice little bootable thing that we can do put it in the drive and it'll mm-hmm. boot up to linux Debian's a whole different story we're going to be doing some uh partitioning some custom work and we will uh we'll find out we'll find out that's going to get done and now i'm debating on whether or not i want to buy uh this aja kona lhi card to do a video mm-hmm. on that i just don't know like okay don't want to spend 70 80 bucks on that which it's a really good deal, but all I want to know is like, what is the actual process for getting a AJA Kona card? Because we talked about this a couple of months ago when they added support. The company themselves like did a huge um, pull request to add support for AJA into OBS, and that was like a big thing that they worked on, and they got it integrated, mm-hmm. and it's now added to OBS itself. Unlike Black Magic, it's like we're not helping you do anything. Figure it out. So I want to see what the process is of like getting that compiled and set up. I'm still debating on that. Still yeah. debating. On that. And stick around. I'll tell you about some audio plugins on Linux when we get towards yes. the end of the show. But Jill, <laughs> yay! Let's jump into this because everybody was talking about this earlier this week. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I say rethinking window management, what? desktop comes to mind. I don't want to say immediately comes to mind, but if I say, you know, a desktop environment is thinking about the way window management works <laughs> and they're going to redo how that, who would you think maybe would possibly. <laughs> I, I knew immediately who it was, obviously, GNOME. <laughs> so. But you know it could be KDE Plasma, but no, but no, it's 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 GNOME. <laughs> well, let me rephrase it like this: If I said KDE is rethinking window management, you, your response would be what KDE? Yeah, what? Re- what? Yeah. Now, but, and now, when I say what the story is about, this is from GNOME blog. GNOME is rethinking window management. You're like, yeah, that sounds like. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Good, bad, up, down, left, and right. Window management is one of those areas. Uh, to the blog post. Uh, the blog poster. I, I, I've been. Who wrote it? I, I don't want to keep saying blog poster. Do, do you tell me who wrote this at the bottom? We're going to go all the way to the bottom. Oh, wow. This is long. Uh, Tobias Bernard. There yeah, we go. Tobias, Tobias wrote. Yeah. 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 Tobias wrote. Uh, 
you know, he's been fascinated with it for 50 years. Nobody's cracked it. And uh, we've relied on, relied on the window metaphor as the primary way of multitasking on the desktop. In this metaphor, each app can spawn one or more rectangular windows, which are stacked by most recently used moved resource. Okay. Here's, uh, I don't know. I, I looked at this. Mm -hmm. I looked at this and uh, my first takeaway is uh, they're going to be doing a couple things. Let me just put it like this. They want to shake things up. They're going to be working on a new type of window management as we've already covered. But they're going to have not one, not two, but three potential layout states. Mosaic, yeah. edge tiling, and a floating window system. And on top of that, they're going to be working on a system that's going to like automatically do what, and I'm quoting here, automatically do what people probably want, end quote, and fully integrating the workspace into the workflow. And they also bring up that this type of tight integration is going to require richer metadata from the apps themselves. There are some videos on here. There's some videos on here. Mm -hmm. No one panic. Let's, let's, let's take a look and see, because I'm at a weird state. I'm at a weird state where um, I like familiar, but I also like new. You yeah, know, I, I yeah. also like, I was uh, super excited about um, when Canonical was working on Mirror, remember? Mm hmm Oh, yeah, because they were going to have the... The, the synergy back and forth from the mobile desktop, to desktop experience yeah. and all that. And I went through all the trouble of like early days of getting that compiled and set up. And I used it and I went, nope. Oh. I mean, eventually Canonical went nope too. But yeah. So here we go. Um, Mosaic, new window management mode uh, combines the best parts of tiling and floating, edge tiling, window splitting the screen edge to edge, and floating the classical stack. Well, let's see what we have in this first video. Okay. All right. We're playing Tetris. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. Hmm. What do we think about that? So you close one and they automatically move to like kind of maximize the space. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of a cool idea. If it works. Let's see what number yeah. two looks like. Okay. We drag the one from the button. Ah, and it goes full screen. A full screen. All yeah. Right. So I'm like, all right, well, I got, I want to full screen this one. Now, my first thought about that is that that seems more involved than just double clicking on the title bar. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know how it works under GNOME currently. I know in XFC, if I want to full screen something, I just double click on the title bar and close it. Let's take yeah. a look. I usually just expand. <laughs> Number three. We drag that to the left, ah, and it turns everything to like a tile. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah very, ni very nice. Now, immediately by the shape of these tiles, I'm like, yes, for the software developer. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and as the article talks about, not all apps work well in a vertical tiling environment. <laughs> so. Obviously, like video editing apps, for instance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's it's good for like the weather notifications and uh, widgets and whatnot. Let's see what this mm -hmm. one does. Okay, so if we drag that, is that going to split it automatically? All right. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I actually really like the concept. They're calling it mosaic, which is combining tiling and floating windows. I think it's they're doing it. Very well. It's well done. Getting additional thoughts on that? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's really nice that I, I think it's really nice that a lot of thought is going into the future of window management on Linux and GNOME. And System76 is also working heavily on new window management paradigms for their up and coming Rust based Cosmic Manager. But like Fen, I'm trained in the old school way of window management, you know, whether it be floating like with with the common desktop environment, stacking with TWM or ICE WM or tiling with one of my favorite, favorite window managers, Rat Poison. And, you know, honestly, for me, one of the reasons I like to use multiple monitors is to avoid the window trappings of floating or tiling so I can have 
multiple apps open full screen on several different monitors and have the text enlarged but an easy layout to use screen mag magnifiers for my half blindness when I need it. So some days my, my vision's better than others. <laughs> so I'm, I'm an unusual use case, I know. <laughs> well, you're definitely not an unusual use case when you say you got a lot of monitors. Yes, this is true, like Ven does. <laughs> Ven has lots of monitors. Uh, most people have more than one monitor these days. Yeah. Something yeah. Uh, I don't really get onto, but I have Brit have to bring up on more occasions that I necessarily would is with games because hey, a lot of game developers that game gets developed on nothing but a laptop mm -hmm. there's oh, never any yeah. testing I'm like how does this handle when there's more than one screen and on some yeah. occasions it, it flips right out yeah it doesn't it doesn't load on the center it loads on the one on the left way on the left hand or side vertically you can't in the see middle, it vertically right. yeah yeah <laughs> so uh but you know, the reason window management has traditionally been left to the users is we know where we want them. Yeah, this is very true. I mean, you know, uh, that window is going to, unless it's Thunderbird, this is true, everybody knows this, <laughs> uh, that window is going to open right back up where I left it. Mm -hmm. Thunderbird still yeah. opens, but it's just like what corner of the screen Thunderbird is going to pick to open in it. <laughs> <laughs> it just does its thing. I, I'm fine with it. I'm like, all right, we'll just put it back over there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, like physically, like laying out everything, like the layout I have right now, one, two, three, four, I got five applications up and running on the streaming box right now where I want them. And that, that's my efficient multitasking experience. When I trust an application, to optimize that for me hmm. yeah no maybe <laughs> maybe but there's also something maybe they're working on this too is i keep space between my application because there's still potential things that i might need to get open yeah same here and i do my best to avoid stacking windows on top of each other unless i'm trying to fix something at like two in the morning then we just get a billion terminals scattered everywhere and i'm completely disorganized uh I, I, I'll try it. I'll try it if I ever catch myself using GNOME. Yeah. When I see well, this, yeah. When I see like that interface, oh, my brain immediately goes to like touch and drag. And, and that's what I was thinking. It, it's very mobile esque. And in fact, in many ways, you can say a lot of this came about because one of my favorite mobile operating systems, WebOS, with their card system. And uh, GNOME has started kind of implementing some of the features from that OS. And that's definitely the, the concept of Mosaic is definitely very similar to the idea of WebOS with like, instead of windows, but cards moving around. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And yeah, I, I think they, they looked at, for instance, how to multitask on the iPad, which is not the greatest experience, but they they were trying to think, okay, what can make this better? And what can make the desktop? You know, how can we integrate some of this functionality into the desktop? <laughs> Can't fault them for trying. Yeah. I I'm commending them for trying to make the you know, GNOME. Try better. something different. Try something yeah. different. Like this is a you know, maybe it's not your thing. I will always defend like weird moonshot stuff like this. Like, hey, we're going to rethink. Now, if you just ask me, like, have have we solved UX on the desktop? I'm like, yeah, we solved that like 30 years ago. Yeah, to me, uh, yeah. <laughs> Same. CDE. Like, <laughs> right. It's like, like CDE is like, and what I would base that off of is like, let's see how much work I can get done under each system. However, I want to see stuff like this, and I champion stuff like this simply because you need people to rethink stuff, and it could never lead to anything but at least they're trying something different we get some new ideas maybe yes. something else branches off from this initial idea and proposal that is better or yeah. this turns out and evolves into something that we're like Pff. well i mean nobody would have thought about that but this is awesome and there you go so true and i and i think also in the future of you know the integration of mobile and desktop like we were talking about earlier then with with Mir, some of the innovations that came out with Mir is 
is that you know that that lends itself uh some of these changes lends itself to an interface like that where you can move a window to another monitor or another computer and then the other one you know pops out of the way and slides over so i think a lot of people yeah. like the concept of that and but i don't know where we're going to get there we might <laughs> we might and you know like large monolithic like setups are not very common these days, but everybody's got a laptop, right? Or at least they got some type of touch device. And most laptops yeah. have touch screens on them these days. So, I mean, this is probably the right way to go. And beautiful thing about Linux, choices. You yeah, call it fragmentation, choices. I call it options. I call it yeah. choices. I don't have to stick with anything if choice. I <laughs> see something I don't like. I can go try something else I do. So, Absolutely. And, and this is awesome. You know, I, I'm so happy that GNOME is working on this because, you know, it is one of the most used desktop environments on Linux. So it makes sense. They want to improve it or they want to give their users more options. And everybody's trying different things. You got GNOME doing their thing, Katie doing them thing, uh, Pop OS, yeah. whatever those wacky kids are up to over at System76. And then you have mm -hmm. the superior option, which is XFCE, which is a yes. shining beacon of perfection, <laughs> unable to be improved upon. Mine would be Window Maker. <laughs> I love Window Maker. I love Window Maker's fun. I, I still yeah. want, uh, to this day, I am like, <laughs> I wish Enlightenment would get more stable. I know, same here. And I love XFCE too. Actually, right now I'm on XFCE, but but uh, I, I go back and forth. <laughs> As I feel like it. <laughs> I use XFC because it is stable. <laughs> yes. XFC doesn't crash. Like <laughs> the code quality in XFCE. Like it's again, well you done. could argue, well, it doesn't do a whole lot. Like, but that's the point. Is yeah. that supposed to hurt me? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's awesome. I just needed to open some windows and like give me a little launcher at the bottom and we're down. Maybe yeah. some notifications up top. What else do you want? I like right clicking on the desktop and getting my applications like in window maker i guess that's just my old school unix love coming out <laughs> i like the option to be able to do that yeah I like it the is option cool. to be able to do that where i'm like uh oh, oh ecstasy uh, is nice that way <laughs> that's usually me locking something up and coming over here to this monitor i'm like can i get the mouse over here oh yeah, boy right there click. we go right yeah. and we get lucky sometimes <laughs> so uh yeah use what you want everybody at gnome keep rocking on doing the crazy stuff don't listen to any of the haters Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like, be weird, be different, you know, you know change. No, you're awesome. <laughs> They're all right. Yeah. Now, I support the GNOME Foundation. So. Talk about. <laughs> Waterfox is back from being a uh, advertising browser. Yeah. So way back in February of 2020 on LWW, we talked about the web browser Waterfox joining the System One advertising company. Well, now Waterfox, the privacy focused web browser, has regained its independence and is parting ways with System One, which, you know, I'm actually kind of happy about. <laughs> They're independent again. And part of this reasoning is there was concern about the Waterfox's future trajectory under the System One ownership. And with this transition, Waterfox users like me can breathe a sigh of relief. You know, as the browse, browser renews its focus on privacy, customization, and performance. And Alex Contos, who is the driving force behind Waterfox's success, and the creator and lead developer, will continue leading the project, Bravo, which is a promising sign for its, you know, community and for all of us users. And Contos actually emphasizes that the newfound independence opens doors for faster development, cool new features, and a better user experience. And in the coming months, he will be working very diligently to advance the browser, you know, focusing on improvements and enhanced privacy, boosting performance and memory utilization, and expand lots of customization options. And so I was so happy to hear this. Uh, you know, Waterfox actually became very popular about 11 years ago and was a very fast alternative to Firefox 
and a great option for the security con conscious. And it's unique because Waterfox still uses Zool or the XML user interface language, which is a user interface markup language actually developed by Mozilla and used extensively to create add-ons. Although Mozilla isn't relying on Zool much anymore. And I actually used to use Waterfox on a regular basis. And I'm hoping that its newfound independence will bring it back as a go-to alternative browser. In fact, Waterfox really has a head start for a web browser focused on security, especially then and you know, in today's world and age where most browsers are shifting in that direction and there are a lot of options available. They were ahead of the game way back when, before people were even really, really seriously thinking about security in the browser. So I went, I want them to succeed. <laughs> and I do know some, quite a few other people who use Waterfox like me. So th this was really, really good news. I was so happy about this. Yeah. Uh, Waterfox exists. That's about all I, I don't really have anything to say positive or negative, but I do remember talking about like, well, they're going to be in head game. You know, that's, that's a horrible match, right? I mean, if you yeah. don't understand like why that's a bad match, <laughs> uh, go ask Google. Yeah, go ask Google. I mean, if you wanted ads in your browser, that was probably the future of Waterfox. <laughs> Google is being owned yeah, by an advertising, advertising company, company that yeah. has a browser. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one downside about Waterfox, they don't have a mobile version. Oh, yeah, that's true. But there are two versions. There's the, the regular version, in fact, that just had an update. And then there's the Waterfox Classic, which I still like to use, too. And that was that was nice that they have both options available for those that like the, the classic user, user interface and those who like the more modern one. Mm. So it was really and I, cool. I'm like looking through like some of the main settings. It doesn't look like you can like just disable WebRTC in uh, Waterfox without using like about config. Mm. You got to dig okay. around and do that. Um, yeah. Which I mean, you know, privacy nuts are gonna be like, gotta get spying on me. Yeah. So, <laughs> Be aware I of see. that. That's a good. That's a good thing for them to look at. Mm -hmm. That's a browser. We need more browsers. Uh, Firefox based because we have a ton of, you know, things based on Chromium. So more stuff based on Firefox is always good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm championing anyone who's doing something that's not Firefox or Chrome based. Gnome Web for the win. <laughs> There's a couple of projects that aren't Gnome. Um, I don't even know. Like, is what is Gnome Web? Is that like their built-in? Yeah, that's that's their built-in. It's completely independent source code. So that that's pretty cool. And they're really they're really actually um, making that one a more um, a full-featured web browser now. Originally, it was just you know just to read articles and tutorial on the oh, Gnome it's web desktop. Kit. Yeah, it's WebKit, but it's it's uh, they're they forked it, and it's yeah really changing <laughs> yeah epiphany yeah. yeah epiphany yeah that's that's the original name was epiphany so uh yeah i would uh there's a couple of people i know the one guy we talked about who was just like i'm gonna write one from scratch and oh, i yeah, compiled it and that. i managed to like get it to launch yeah. and like there's still a long way to go but I, I want it's such a daunting undertaking to create a web browser yeah and when that oh. it can take a team to do it and something like this go check out waterfox if uh that's your thing if firefox is too mainstream for you yeah it's forked from apple's uh webkit but webkit actually originally was uh, kde so yay one of kde's browsers now code <laughs> what is uh canonical up to because you got a big long paragraph about yes a kernel <laughs> <laughs> so I dare you to make that entertaining. Uh, <laughs> so this is something that is actually really huge for Canonical and will further increase, you know, the speed of Ubuntu Linux for industrial enterprises, including telecom workloads, automation systems for the factory floor and life-saving medical equipment, which is extremely important. So Conical just announced real-time Ubuntu Linux optimized for Intel Core CPU SOCs for Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. This is, this is pretty big news. In February, 
actually Canonical announced the availability of their real-time Ubuntu kernel for Ubuntu 22.04 LTS Jammy Jellyfish for users with an Ubuntu Pro subscription. But now Canonical has optimized its Ubuntu RT kernel for Intel Silicon, which will actually enable enterprises to use the power of Linux for a wide range of use cases. And with this expansion of the real-time Ubuntu kernel, Canonical addresses actually the growing need for real-time capabilities among enterprises that want to improve efficiency, optimized operations, and guarantee reliability for mission-critical systems. Very important. And the solution is actually supported on Intel Core SOC processors with the Intel Time Coordinated Computing and Intel Time Sensitive networking protocols. And this includes the newest 12th gen Intel Core processors, codenamed Alder Lake S, but more platforms will be announced shortly. And uh, th this, is, this is really big, because as Ven, Ven can tell you, the important, importance of a real-time kernel, um, I've used it here on LWW for doing audio of Jack, and he uses it on a daily day-to-day -day basic basis to uh, run our run Linux Gamecast network. <laughs> Very important. So it's really getting, going to, you know, help improvements in areas where you need to, applications need to talk to each other over a network instantaneously. Like when, when our doctors are doing surgeries and, that, and uh, you know, the back end for those needs. Now, uh, this is from 9to5linux.com. The uh, article Job was quoting was, uh, who wrote it? Marius Nestor. Yeah, Marius. So I want you to go back and give that a check. When it comes to real-time kernels, uh, yeah, they're awesome. They're even more awesome when they're not behind a paid subscription. Yeah, <laughs> which you can't, you can install <laughs> our, our real-time. And Ubuntu. You know, canonical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you want this? and can give it some money. I'm like, how about I just install Debian? Use that RT kernel. Yes, which which I am using actually right now. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, uh, most people have no need. No, this is for enterprise. Uh, do I use an RT kernel here? Yes, I do. Do I have to? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But for desktop usage, audio stuff like that, what you want is not a full RT kernel, but you want something with preempt enabled. Mm -hmm. You want mm -hmm. preemptive. Why? Less complications. Because you will run into, um, now it's a much better situation than it used to be. Like if you try to, let's say you have, you're part of the 80 something percent of the population that has an NVIDIA GPU. You, you try to do that. Most people don't know how to install NVIDIA drivers, mm -hmm. which irritates me to no end. You know, it's like, well, I can install them from the automated packaging system. And I'm like, yeah, but you need to learn how to install drivers the right uh, If you try to do that, it's going to tell you no. If you try to download the run file to install your NVIDIA drivers, it's going to tell you no, but louder. Mm. And NVIDIA is not going to tell you the moon glyphs to make it work, which you can do. Probably do a video about that one day. Something about, like, don't give children loaded guns. But mm -hmm. um, then you run into other situations, usually for proprietary hardware, like Blackmagic drivers, not having full RT. So, like the box Jill is on, full RT, hard RT. Jackbox, running our audio chain, full RT, threat booper, broadcasting, preempt, not mm -hmm. full RT. Okay. And it still gets the job done. So, um, and there's very rare situations where you would need a hard RT kernel. And again, that's going to be an enterprise automation embedded type stuff on the desktop. I wouldn't even recommend it. That's one of those yeah. things like, you know if you'd need it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Right? Like like in the surgery room. <laughs> so if the doctor wants to communicate with someone outside of the hospital and get it in real time. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of this audio stuff, I threw down a little bit of a video. I've been working on this for a minute. Reaper on Linux. Because mm -hmm. nobody's doing Reaper Linux videos. And 
Why is it important to do that? Because Reaper's cross-platform. It works on Windows. It works on Mac. It works on Raspberry Pi, which is running Linux. It runs on Linux, running Linux on your x86. You got it, and a ton of people use it. I mean, there's not a whole lot of information about it on Linux. I still, the most common question is, so I run it in Wine. No, it's been native on Linux for like <laughs> quite a while now. And you want to install audio plugins. There's a couple of them, LV2, Clap, VST, VST3. There's also um, Ladspas, but like they don't work in Le Reaper, so forget about it. And here's the thing. If you install plugins this way, they're going to work with Reaper, Adore, Bitvig, Audacity, anything that you normally use it with. And you might not know where to start with this. Like, you might not, like, what, what, mm -hmm. what's up? I can't find these dot folders. Where are these dot folders at? Because you got to think, day one Linux, you don't know you need to go on there and sh enable show hidden files in your home directory. And those are not on by default. Most of the time, somebody's going to like, no, my distribution does that. They're not on by default for the vast majority. Um, can I want to show you like, where do the LV2 plugins go? Because sometimes you just copy over an SO file for a library. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get to mm -hmm. copy over the entire folder, though. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that. Mix and match and the right place to put them in because it can get confusing because your VSTs and your VST2s are going to go in your VST directory, but VST3s, nope, they don't go there. <laughs> they go in your VST3 directory. Then you get the dot clap thing, all that fun stuff. It's yeah. pretty interesting. This will get you up and running in a couple of seconds. And you got to make sure that whatever DAW you're using, whatever audio tool you're trying to get something done with, is pointed at the right spot in your home directory. They usually are by default, but you always want to double check it. So I walk you in and out of that in less than two minutes. Go give that video a watch if you've been, but like that's there for new users. And that's it needs awesome, to be. Ben. I did one about Hollow Knight a couple of weeks ago, right? For yes. modding Hollow Knight. And somebody left me a comment on that, and they say, hey, that's awesome. You just got to the point. Because, you know, it's like a two-minute long video. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That, that's kind of the point, isn't it? I'm like, Yeah, this is how, it do how it's done. You don't now, have to wait. Wouldn't it have been better if I made that video. Hollow Knight video? <laughs> and instead of, you know... Doing the one and a half minute long video, I spent five minutes telling you what Hollow Knight is. Then I spent another five minutes telling you my personal thoughts on Hollow Knight. And then I spent one minute telling you how to do the thing that I told you I was going to tell you how to do in the video description. YouTube would love that. Yeah. <laughs> They're like tweaking. They suggest like you, you want to make them at least eight minutes long. That way we can put mid-roll ads in them and ads at the beginning and ads at the end. Vin, you're just missing out on this money. <laughs> I'm not here to make money. I'm here to try to help people learn how to use Linux. So let's keep doing stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to help <laughs> us do that, hey, head over to LinuxGameCast.com, smash that support button, become a patron, support us on LibrePay, PayPal. We even take that, you know, Bitcoin's worthless these days. It's, it's like negative money. Send us that and we'll turn it into studio equipment for everybody. We get Amazon wish list. If you want to pick us up a little bit of a present, Jill's got one, Pedro's got one, Jordan's got one. I got one for the mm. studio. I always warn you, I will publicly shame you on this board <laughs> back here. Unless you like slip me an extra 20, but um, that's always a fun thing to do. We got a merch store. That's where Jill's sticker came from. That's where the t-shirts yeah. and everything else. And of course, a humble mm -hmm. affiliate link. So yeah, thanks for people supporting what we do, letting us do stuff like just, I think <laughs> that's a really good example of like, I'm not going to make dumb videos like that because those videos irritate me. When I click on a video and I read a guide, I want to know how to do the thing it said it was going to teach me how to do. <laughs> yes. It's like going to look up a recipe. You're like, I want to know how to make barbecued aardvark. <laughs> and you type in Google, how do I barbecue an aardvark? And the first result comes up and you click on it and it starts out, ah, I was born in a small country town. But I'm like, no. I don't need your backstory. I'd need your recipe for aardvark. Yeah. <laughs> so I was so, you know, very appreciative of it and that you went, went through that all for each individual plugin. Cause I used to have to install hundreds for my 3d animation software. And in those early days, there was no documentation. You just had to figure it out yourself. <laughs> the plugin's pretty yeah. basic. Um, <laughs> 
you do have the options with every distribution because that's going to be one of the common things. I think somebody's already left a comment. They're like, by the way, I use Arch. You can install a lot of these plugins from the AUR. That's mm -hmm. cool. Um, but I also <laughs> like a lot of the plugins from the KVR audio database. Because like, where then? Where do you get the plugins? That's like one of the first things in the video. KVR yeah. audio database and LinuxMusic.rocks are great resources for stuff you don't know exists. Awesome. And they're not in your R either. And they're not in your Debian repos or your PPAs or your Debian multimedias. Yeah. These are things you never heard of. And it clutch your pearls, get out your fainting couches. There's also paid plugins, which you can buy that do other cool stuff too. I have a couple of paid plugins. They're not open source, but I always try my best to support anybody who's doing plugin development on Linux. Like I think I own like 80% of the um, ACM plugins. Mm -hmm. And um, because that guy's got a series of plugins, He's like these are only available for Linux. I'm like, let's see how many I think I can use. Like I bought stuff I've never used. I, I just gave Jordan one. I'm like, here, take half a present. Um, yeah. But thank you for your support. We get to do stuff like this. If you back us on Patreon, get access to our Discord. You get to watch videos and stuff like that, usually about a week early because I put it up for listener feedback. I'm like, hey, you got questions about this? Should we add anything to it? Should we subtract anything? And then somebody's like, well, you need to multiply. And I'm like, we're not multiplying anything. I'm drawing the line there. <laughs> you get this show completely uncut. Not just like this little 30, 40 minute block. You usually get like an hour and a half, two hour block. The entire live experience, because you can't make the live stream. You don't want to watch the YouTube video. You want it in a podcast format. We got you covered. Also, same thing for Linux Gamecast Weekly, except it's usually like three and a half, four hours of us talking about mm -hmm. pretty much anything, including the pre-pre-super shows and a little behind-the-scenes look at what we got going on. We appreciate your support. That's it for our little plug. Let's talk about the biggest the piece big of pie. pie. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> Well, I mean, comparatively, comparatively. Yeah, this is one of the biggest slices of pie we've ever done. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. What is it? Oh, it's this. Okay. So if I, audio listeners, this doesn't work on the video uh, because you're like, I know what that is, but you don't if you're listening. If I, if I tell you, hey, man, we're going to get a 64 core system with 128 gigs of RAM. You're like, oh, that sounds pretty neat. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Like, that's, that's pretty nice. But then I say, how about we get a 64 core risk five based system with 128 gigs of RAM? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking like, wait, what? That sounds like a big board. Because that's what Milk 5 technology plans on shipping, not 10 years from now, not four years from now, not next year, in this December. That's not cheap. But why am I bringing that up? We've seen these boards in the past. Maybe not to this extent, not this powerful, <laughs> but the, we've seen ATX, and this is MATX form factor, yeah, approaching, you know, like, and usually they weren't risk five; they were ARM boards, and you see an ARM board, like, ooh, that one's got some PCI Express slots on, takes them. You don't even want to ask what it is, you know, like, call for a quote, because they're outrageously expensive. This, this is borderline affordable. You're looking at 1100 yeah. bucks to get the board. So that's going to get you the CPU. The heat sink. You supply a case, put some drives in it, good to go. I mean, it's got NVMe on it. Pretty happy with that. Uh, SATA, one, two, three, four, five SATAs. Yeah, pretty sweet. And, I was uh, really happy it has three full length PCI Gen 3 slots. And right? that's, you know, workstation level computing here in a micro ATX form factor. Pretty sweet. So, uh, that's the base model. If you want to give them two grand, you get the board, you get a case, you get a dual 10 gig neck and uh, like a GPU that technically, GP, an AMD R5 230. Mm, mm, so you yeah. get a vintage graphics card. How much does yeah. an AM R5 230 cost? <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> They're pretty uh, inexpensive. I have a couple in my collection. <laughs> If I was going to go to eBay right now, because I'm totally not going to eBay right now to see how much AMD <laughs> so maybe twenty dollars. I don't know. <laughs> do, we, do we get any takers in chat? Nobody's going to play the game <laughs> on this. They're, they're just going to no. I'm not. I don't care about old cards. 
Have some fun, people. So you say about 20 bucks? Yeah. How, all right, how many could I get uh, eight of them for? Maybe 50? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I'll give you a discount for, for a lot. <laughs> 16 uh, bucks. See? I was right. <laughs> yep. There it is. Now but you yeah, can get eight of them for 100. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I was actually originally going to save 100, and I said, well, maybe they'll give you a discount for buying bulk on 50. <laughs> 17, Aww. 30. What can you do with this card? You can get video out of it. That's it. Yeah. And you got to think about this stuff. This is Risk 5, which brings me to mm -hmm. who would want to buy this board? Because if you're looking to start working with Risk 5 and do a development based on Risk 5, or you need boards to compile, because you don't want to do cross compiling for some weird reason. There you go. Like mm -hmm. that's it's it's completely reasonable for a workstation board. Yeah, absolutely. And they're they're calling the the one that's fully uh, built the Pioneer box, and it comes with only a three hundred fifty watt power supply, which is really low. But this demonstrates the you know the power efficiency of the sixty four core Risk Five. Now, I'd recommend putting a higher <laughs> higher wattage power supply in there if you're going to use a high end. Uh, you know, AI compute <laughs> video card, <laughs> but you know, out of the box, it'll run. And that honestly is amazing for a 64 core risk five processor. Oh my gosh, 350 Watts. <laughs> that's low. And like Ven was saying earlier, the price that's, that's amazing. I mean, if this, if this was announced a year ago, it'd probably be like what, Ten, five to ten thousand dollars minimally <laughs> so it's we've really come a long way with the price of risk five <laughs> so yeah what does it run fedora <laughs> uh well the nice thing is last week we talked about the debian port for risk five the official port and uh so eventually debian will run on it <laughs> eventually uh so yeah. What, what I'm saying is this is the perfect white elephant gift to get uh, for your Windows buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, here you go. Here's something super cool. It only runs yeah. Linux. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I think it's going to be funded because their initial goal, like these things are already made. I have to explain how this stuff works to people sometimes, mainly because they're curious, not because I don't think you don't know. If you do know, that's great. Uh, when you see like a low goal like this, $50,000, that's, this is to estimate how many they need to get packed. These things are already printed. They're ready to go. They need to figure out what they need as far as like shipping, getting these things, things where this is logistics pricing. of like, how many people are interested in this? They've already raised $209,000. So they got those numbers. So that first batch, you know, that's why they're going to be able to get them out by December. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, as DeCresney says in chat, this is, you know, a great computer for those of us who use Blender, who use Maya for 3D animation packages. But, we're going to have to wait a while for all those packages to be ported to uh, the risk system. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, like what you're looking at, like that, with all like, uh, you might see Maya support in a decade. If you yeah. want Blender, uh, Blender on a Raspberry Pi 4 soon. will probably run circles around this thing. Yeah. This is a true. development board. They stress this, and I stress this. This is not for playing around on the desktop. This is a development board for building stuff. Yeah. Like if you're but not was... writing software, <laughs> if your goal is to run software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ben, like we were talking about last week, you remember how long it took for for ARM compatibility with all the apps on Linux? You know, that that took I was like we're still they're still doing it. They're still mm -hmm. porting apps. And what? That's been almost twenty years now, so <laughs> So it's going to take a while to port all those apps to Risk. That's a, Risk Five. So well, let's see. This thing's Fedora, Debian, Gentoo, Arch, and Ubuntu, Deepin. And see, well, you can get like the big box if you want the Milky V. It's got mm -hmm. it's got a transparent window on it, so that's how you know you're cool. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, can, I like the case. It's nice. You can nice have, and like, compact. Yeah, it's micro ATX or mini ATX, whatever it is. See, look uh, at that. Micro. Not mini ITX, micro ATX. Well, the actually the case looks like it's it 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 could be a mini ITX. I mean, it obviously is if it if it supports micro, but 
it looks small enough to be a mini ITX case. Well, it is an <laughs> MATX form factor, and I believe that's... I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> there you go. Run out, drop 1100 bucks on it, and be like, I don't know, put it in a closet for 20 years, I'm sure it'll be worth something. Maybe not. All right, we're running a little bit long. We get to run. Uh, it was awesome. Hang it out. Let's yeah. do some credits. And uh, boom. <laughs> oh, Steve has been. <laughs> he said uh, people should put plastic storage bins in my wish list. And instead of a, of a buy me a coffee. People should put <laughs> plastic storage bins in your wish list. Okay, everybody. You heard Joe. Hacker account. <laughs> Yes, hack my and account. Put some bins in yeah. there. Yeah, yes, the house husband. I need to put you. You can pick out some plastic bins that I put in my wish list. <laughs> oh, thank you to our all our wonderful patrons, our sea monsters, our advisors, our death notes, all the people uh, in our Discord chat right now, <laughs> our chairlings, LWW three eighty six, amazing Ben. <laughs> Wait until you blow up the video full screen and look next to the uh, LWDW. Oh, okay. I will. <laughs> I missed it. Nobody's <laughs> mentioned it. It's been there the oh. whole time in this shot. I've probably noticed it, but forgetting what it was. <laughs> it's right there right now. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye, everyone. I know I've looked at that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just put it in for this episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have to go back and watch it. Do, do. Yeah, actually. So you didn't put it in last week, but this just this week? Yeah. Okay. I can, uh, I'll show everybody at home. Let me see, mm -hmm. uh... I'll give you something you can zoom in on ads. Give me a sec. Okay. I'll put it in a uh, Discord live chat. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Steve Husband. Fun show. Oh! Oh, oh, up there <laughs> in the upper third. <laughs> okay, we didn't notice that earlier. Oh, I guess. Don't feel bad. Fo Nobody did. I focused on doing the show, I guess. <laughs> I thought you meant on the credits, because sometimes in the credits you've uh, made little adjustments. Let me see. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's funny, Ben. <laughs> I three eighty six. Well, we only get to do season. one three eighty six. So is it an excess? Excess? Let me look. <laughs> oh man, I don't even know if the pings got enough. The original pings got enough resolution. From yeah, I can't to find out. Uh, let me open it up. Uh, where's the original? It is. Oh boy 1985 somebody's gonna have to reverse engineer here's the original ping yeah it's probably it's probably not dx uh, yeah okay so it isn't it is dx amazing Three it has six, a math co dx 16 okay. bit that wait that is was... it dx or sx is this we got dx and sx markings on it oh okay <sighs> uh <laughs> okay. all right I'm l9 yeah. what is it now, my 311, yeah. 389. Uh, yeah, I know it's the screenshot. Yeah. Manufactured by Compact, uploaded. Oh, that doesn't <laughs> tell me. That's cool, Vin. Maybe it is the SX. Oh, there's a 213. There's a DX and SX in it, but man, I don't remember these. Uh, SX 213. Yeah, it's probably it, it it should have a Mathco processor support if it's on the first line. I think that that was the differentiation. <laughs> and it's telling you that it can also clock down to SX. So now I, I see the clear I, I kept zooming in <laughs> on 
on the uh, upper third, and it wasn't high re resolution enough. <laughs> Frequency 16 megahertz, uh, PGA 13. Oh, it is a DX. Yeah, so I, I used to render <laughs> animation on one of those chips. <laughs> 3D Studio for DOS. Back in those days, and, and Lightwave, and Imagine 3D. <laughs> so, what was the uh, maximum power? How many watts did that sucker pull? Oh, boy. Mm. <laughs> oh, gosh. I used to know stuff like this. I have forgotten. Let's say... Mm, 22 watts? 22 watts? No, uh, these didn't have heat sinks on them. Mm -hmm. The uh, typical maximum power dissipation for one of these things is about 2 watts. 2, okay. <laughs> we were way off, Amir. <laughs> it's been a while since I looked at the 386s. <laughs> But I always put a heat sink on all mine, so because I was doing rendering on it, and I always had fans and heat sinks. Yeah, we didn't start seeing um, we <laughs> fans even came later. We didn't even start seeing uh, just heat sinks until uh, forty six. Usually, like around DX, some axes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... I used to make my own heat sinks. Oh yeah. I've done heat yeah. sinks. I've milled my own water mm -hmm. blocks. <laughs> Destroyed a drill press making a water block one time. It was fun. <laughs> no, yeah, it was a different time. Now you think like, uh, man, like, what what is their best mobile chip right now? Like AMD or chip? What are they? What, what, what's the Steam Deck like? Fifteen watts. Yeah, it's only like, yeah, 15. I don't, I'm guessing. I think it ramps up to 20 on a high load. Hmm. Do, 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 15 do. watts. It maxes out at 15. Oh, okay. I was assuming hmm. 15 wasn't there. I didn't know where it was at. <laughs> um, oh, they got the data sheet. Uh, APU power, 4 to 15 watts. Mm, all right. Yeah, we're going to be talking about another handheld uh, Saturday. You know who's making a handheld? Guess who's getting into the Steam Deck business? They're not making Steam oh. Decks. They're making, you know, like Asus has got the uh, ROG Ally, I think it's called. Yeah, the Ally. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple companies that I just read recently. Yeah, that's okay. Tell me then when you say it. I, I'll probably. Well, that's too easy because if I tell you, you'd be like, I knew that. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> I, I just read a few articles this week and I'm trying to remember who they were from. <laughs> so that is that is all thing like, do you know that right now? Yeah, no. Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> you know, if it, this was. If, 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 Oh man, so if we could go back to like 20, 2015 or somewhere in there, we could have had an IBM Steam Deck, but unfortunately they sold their PC business. So we're going to be getting a Lenovo. Oh, Steam Lenovo, Deck. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it had a neat, like, edgy design to it, <laughs> like angled, angled design. The Legion. Yeah, the Legion. And I think like yeah, the Asus ROG Ally, everyone seems to be, we've seen a couple announced, like I've seen another one that has been announced, uh, I saw this morning, and they all seem to want to be priced around what the uh, Asus yeah, ROG is, so is. they're targeting yeah. going to be about 700 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> no one can compete with the Steam Deck. Well, <laughs> I can't wait for the next... Uh, variation of the Steam Deck. See, more power and at a good price. I think they'll make a um, 
the next version of Steam Deck because that was like one quote that we got from Valve was uh, they were surprised that everybody was buying the most expensive Steam Deck. That was mm -hmm. the one that yeah everyone bought and like we didn't make enough of the we thought everyone would order like you know the mid range one and like the lower end one. The, all the main initial sales. Or for the high and what's what's the high end Steam Deck cost? I forgot how much Steam Decks cost. Uh, six, uh, five, five ninety nine. Was it five ninety nine? I got the middle of the range one. Three ninety nine for the sixty four. Uh, five twenty nine for the mid range, and it's okay. only it's six forty nine, which is still six forty nine cheaper okay. than uh, like the Asus. Now the Asus is faster, but it's kneecapped because it's running Windows. It was on sale for six hundred dollars, and they're in the last sale. That's why. Yeah, it was like twenty, thirty percent off or something like that, right? Yeah. I, I bought the middle range one not because of price, just because the screen is brighter than the the top one it has a dark, a little darker screen. <laughs> yeah, man, you're a unique yeah. uh, flower. I love my Steam Deck. Yeah, Strider, Only. I agree. I, I use it as a computer to do show notes on a oh, lot. No, 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 no. Strider's yeah. the only person. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't jump on his train. It's just Strider. <laughs> Everybody else is uh, secretly unhappy with their Steam Deck. I think there's a lot of people, and like definitely more now, people who bought Steam Decks that just bought them to play games, man. Like, you know, they bought yeah. a Steam Deck for the same reason they bought a Nintendo Switch. They're like, yeah. Play some games on it. That's it. Drastically overestimate how many people want to tear apart a uh, handheld device. <laughs> but I can definitely see Valve coming out with a uh, more powerful, higher-end Steam Deck. Like something in that because the asus rog hasn't sold gangbusters by any stretch of the imagination but there's a data point that valve was able to get from that and that mm -hmm. is there are people willing to pay seven and eight hundred bucks for one of these things for the high end yeah so that changes like the equation of valve's like okay we got that much money to work with what can we do with that if we made a seven hundred dollar if we were targeting a seven hundred dollar price point or you know an eight hundred dollar price point Non-tinkering buddy? Yeah. Like, the Steam Deck has that massive advantage, especially for, I think, most everyone outside of, like, just console purists, is it's got all your games on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? If you go out and buy a Nintendo Switch, if I went out and bought a Nintendo Switch, I'd be like, oh, man, I gotta go buy all these Switch games? Good, I'll just wait for a Nintendo sale. Why is everybody laughing at me? Um... But, you know, you get a Steam Deck. Like, oh, yeah, I got all my games here. That's a pretty big sell. Yeah, absolutely. I think people are happy with them. <laughs> uh, Baldur's Gate, I know Jordan. When is that coming out? Baldur's I know Jordan's Gate. told me yeah. a million times. I, I think know. it's this week. <laughs> I think he's going to be playing it Thursday, so I, I assume it comes out between now and tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Okay. <laughs> i got to launch Steam and, and see. Where is it, Baldur's Gate? Which one is he wants to play? It's one of those D&D &D games. The one from Larian. Is that Baldur's Gate? Rose Hit says tomorrow. That's tomorrow? That tomorrow. All right. You know what? Both of you are correct because it is technically August. You're good on that. <laughs> August is a little more vague than tomorrow, but thank you. Yeah, uh, Jordan backed that a long time ago. I've watched him. You know, he played uh, uh, yeah. some of the pre-release stuff. So it seems like it's got multiplayer, and I'm sure he's going to be looking for people to play with eventually. It won't be mere. Not. <laughs> That's not my style of game. Not, well, 
it's my style of game if we're doing it to play around. Yeah. And like yeah. be chaotic and do stuff like that. But Jordan's like, I, and I understand. Like he's been waiting on this game forever. He's like, I want to go through this thing right. I'm yeah. not the guy. Yes. For that adventure, I'm just going to be causing chaos and problems. Not intentionally. Most <laughs> of the time. Yeah, those aren't my style of games either, but I do love watching the gameplay of it. Like I enjoy when Jordan's playing it and I enjoy watching, you know, other streamers play them. Mm. They're fun. They're very interesting. And getting in into all the mechanics. I mean, some of the D&D stuff I do really love. So I shouldn't say, you know, that I don't like the genre cuz I I actually do. <laughs> but it's for me it's more also a time issue. So you got to Put in a lot of time <laughs> to those games. Now cut into the Disney videos. Yeah. <laughs> in my um, Linux videos. <laughs> the, uh, what was it? Like, my D&D knowledge, like, D&D's never been something I got into. Just hasn't been. Like, whatever. But uh, I did go back and, like, I, I joked about this. Like, most of my D&D knowledge comes from the uh, Drizzt series oh, yeah yeah like yeah all 37 or 35 bucks or whatever it is i listen to all those no it's funny i enjoy playing playing dd in irl like you know we did a couple campaigns of jordan and that was a lot of fun um to me that's much more fun than playing the games mm. uh, digital games because I, I and i also like you know at the conventions when you're you know, i sometimes go to game conventions and you're watching people play it and and you know, really getting into it. That's a lot of fun. It really is. I've tried to watch so many, um, you know, like Critical Role and the one thing it's me, uh, different peep streamers who have done like D and D streams. I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it. <laughs> I can't. I, it's I get, They're having fun. That's awesome. But they're like doing role playing, and it, it it makes me cringe under a table when I see that for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, you guys have a blast i just can't mm -hmm. hang out with that hi welcome back linux cast yeah we just got done with our linux weekly daily wednesday linux news show <laughs> and now we're in the after show just shooting the breeze having fun <laughs> linux linux cast without you yeah. all right i mean technically correct <laughs> mm. oh man this thing's heavy this is a brick of aluminium. Oh, it is, sure is. This yeah. first gen one. I'm sure. Yeah, I have the first and the second, and they're both heavy. <laughs> it's just milled. Like, <laughs> this is home defense. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's cool that you went on eBay, though, and you found the remote. That was nice. <laughs> I found the remote for 99 cents because when I saw that they were like 40 bucks for a real remote, a used real remote. Yeah. Uh, I was like, we might not be doing this project because I'm not spending forty dollars for a remote for something I spent six bucks on. It's funny because I have two, but I only have one remote. Only one of them came with the remote, but it works on both. So and, that's uh, okay. If you can pair it, yeah. The problem with like, pairing it—that's another problem you got to work mm -hmm. around—is <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have to pair it in order to. Do the sequence to get it to boot but if we got to pair this sucker there's no way to do that without this thing first being registered to an itunes account which yeah. i'm sure it is but it's not mine because this is used uh, the there's there's no procedure other than just to wipe the drive and put a you know downloaded image and try to get it to reset to pair because even though it's got a USB port in the back, there is no keyboard mouse support. Can't plug it in. I mean, you can plug it in, it doesn't do anything. You get Linux up and running on it, it works like a USB port. But under the uh, Apple TV OS, can't do it. Yeah. Doesn't work. So, then we got to figure out, um, this is one of the reasons I'm going to be doing the drive swap, because it uses a 44 pin drive which you know that's power over the ide cable remember ide cable oh yeah <laughs> so we're going to take a converter and bust that down to sata and put an ssd in it ssd is not going to fit in it so we're going to have to de-shell the ssd 
Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. We're gonna be. We're, it's <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna be, be interesting. Cool then. Yeah. Yeah. When when I was playing around with it, uh, SSDs were still a new thing. Mm. And we'll see. I think like maybe long term goal, if I get Debian up and running on it, um, depending. See if we can get Steam installed to see how bad it is. Oh, gosh, yeah, I haven't even attempted that. Because I know it's possible. I put, like, Cody TV on mine. <laughs> well, that's the, um, what is what is the name of the distribution everybody puts uh, the easy OSMC. one to put on it? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's piece of cake, and you can turn it into, like, a nice little media server, but, like, to get access to, uh, you know, to the point of, like, let's put oh, Steam yeah, on it or full, something like that. We gotta, yeah, full Debian. We gotta do some hacking on it. Yes. <laughs> Which should be possible. I know it's possible because I saw a guy, like, I wrote like half a guide of doing it. And he's like, this is really teat. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be fun for a stream, though. So, also, these things run incredibly hot. They are. There's a. Uh, I think this is the one I looked at. It was one on, one on instructables. Then I think I found it. What were you looking uh, for? An Apple TV installing Debian. Oh, it's been updated to OSMC. Okay. <laughs> so they had Instructables used to have a good uh, Debian install on the Apple TV. Well, there was a uh, repo that required uh, you download it and you're like, run it. There was batch files for Windows and it would generate a build. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. abandoned. And all the links for all that stuff is dead, so that doesn't work anymore. That's what. Uh, okay, that, that's see, that's what I use because I have a really ancient version of Debian on there, and I remember having to, yeah, I use Windows packages. So we're going to be doing <laughs> um, rolling it back further arc. than that. We're going to be doing a, that all that automated stuff by hand. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Maybe <That'll> be fun. <laughs> that might that'll be a the, fun stream. <laughs> It's, it's going to be one of those, like, hmm, uh, how, how bad do I want to do it? Mm -mm. Best case scenario, um, I will make a, I will do, like, the basics of that video will be, like, just getting OSMC up and running on it and, like, swapping out the hard drive. Because mm. I can do that in about five minutes. Yeah, it's quick and easy. Instead of that 19-minute long video that's on YouTube right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a guy with a camera halfway across his room. So is this the first time you're putting Linux on one of your Apple devices, Ben? You make it sound like I have a bunch of Apple devices. This yeah, you is, don't. This is I my guess, Apple device. Because I have so many, I just, I realized it's like... Probably... That would be the only reason to own an Apple device is to put Linux on it. Oh, well, absolutely. That's why I own about a uh, hundred of them. <laughs> so, you know, somewhere between seven and 50. Yeah. <laughs> Um, In fact, I, I just a, Apple. Uh, it just upgraded my uh, uh, G4 Cube. Uh, it's like just for me. There's Ubuntu. no like <laughs> outside of like entertainment value. Yeah. And to make content for a live stream. Yeah. There's nothing productive you can do by putting Linux on this. That doesn't serve any actual purpose other than like if you need something to do, maybe do yeah. it. Uh, well, Raspberry you can still Pi use it as a TV box. <laughs> so. If you want to use this TV box. Leave Apple TV on it. It's a better experience. Uh, no. <laughs> I want Cody. No, I, I put Cody on mine. For, uh, no, I actually had it hooked up to the TV for a while. It connects Steve Husband. <laughs> yeah, it's a one gigahertz it's single core, and it's it's a dumpy experience. Like Raspberry Pi 3 yeah, dance all yeah, over this better. thing's head. Yeah. Um, plus, it runs super hot, and it uses significantly more power because it's x86. It is, yeah. It's got a component out, so that's where it might get a little bit interesting. But then again, you would have to have like one of those uh, CRT monitors that you'd want to use RGB with. I used it on my old plasma TV that had component. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it does have a uh, left and right RCA, but uh, it's got optical out, so it's got some bit of. Yeah. And uh, it's got an Ethernet port on the back that has a whopping 10 megabits. <laughs> yeah, boo. So 
Vin has an Apple TV that he's going to stream and put Linux on, and that's one of the boxes that I had by the TV for many years, by our Plasma TV. <laughs> so we're talking about how fun it is to put Linux on it and hack it. But I, I had my G4 Cube, too, also as my... Uh, as my uh, TV computer as well, media cube. Yeah, not the Apple Cube. This is the other the low profile one that I had sitting. One, one of the other many computers that used to sit by the Plasma TV <laughs> with my boxy box. I had the Apple TV, I had the boxy box. Uh, I had my um, uh, G4 Cube. And my Ouya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was playing with all the things. <laughs> That's scary around the tablet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve remembers how long it took me to, to, you know, extract them from the living room with all their cables and, and store them. <laughs> That's why I'm a fan of AirPlay. Yeah. Or Chromecast, you know, the cast button now. I'm like, I know, it's nice. Boop. Right on the TV. I don't even do that because we have smart TV now, so I just it's easier to do it on the TV. If I didn't get <laughs> so frustrated by like smart TV interfaces, <laughs> I wish everybody would just. Hey, here's why I really wish Android TV had taken off because Android TV mm -hmm. was really cool for its time. I wish they had developed it. Was that. yeah. I still have a little box. Now everybody's got. Every manufacturer's got their own little take on how they're going to do that. And you better hope they update it. I mean, they're going to quit updating it at some point. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like that. Oh. Cool, everybody. All right. It's already 4.30. I'm going to go make this into a show. I'm going to put out a... Uh, I've been meaning to do it forever, but August is first of the month. So I'm going to do a opt-in to show notes. Because if you're a Death Note or above, you get access to our show notes. Mm -hmm. And I have always told myself I'm going to do this four times a year, like once a quarter, is clear it, make a post on Patreon that if you're Death Note, you're going to see it or above, and you can just re-opt back in in case like you're like, I don't want the show notes anymore. And like, you never got around to telling me or anything. Like, I don't want anybody getting spammed. Mm -mm. So it's going to be yeah, one of those things that, that's going to go out and like leave a comment. That's yeah. all you got to do. Yeah, and you haven't done that in a while. It's been a long time. It's one of yeah. those things like, I need to do that. Like, we're going to do that. <laughs> I've been meaning to do it forever. So, uh, yeah. Cool, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Jordan's going to be back tomorrow with the, uh, some of that D&D &D stuff. He's going to be trying that out on Linux. Mm -hmm. Find out how well that runs. It should be a good time. Back Friday for track mania points match and of course saturday yes it's almost like if you go over to our schedule <laughs> there we go i'm at a <laughs> there it is i don't like how they do the days up and down on the twitch schedule oh i know it's yeah it's, i it, wish they did left, left to right left to right it's particularly uh irritating on mobile <laughs> it's oh, uh, yeah that's our little schedule i'll let you know get some notifications you've got a twitch account don't pretend you don't hello gnu telejar hi <laughs> you're just catching us as we are leaving <laughs> that's the best time show yeah <laughs> it's a risk-free commitment be like hey what's going yeah. on bye Oh man, cool everybody. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and uh, I'll be back Friday. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.